This video will uh, present some uh, interesting ideas about simulating a system memory with uh, the end goal of uh, creating uh, an entire system simulation. I'm assuming uh, you are already familiar with uh, my previous videos about uh, designing a system simulator and about the difference between a CPU, CPU simulator and a system simulator. So uh, in this video uh, we are going to see how uh, memory is organized and uh, what we can do to simulate it. I will uh, begin with uh, describing some uh, memory chips uh, then uh, we're going to see how uh, these uh, are used to implement actual memories and then we'll see what uh, we need to simulate. If you already watched the uh, Designing a System Simulator movie, uh, you probably remember that uh, we don't actually need to simulate memory chips uh, or chips of any kind. But uh, what we need to simulate are uh, the characteristics of uh, system components. But in order to get at uh, memory component characteristics, uh, we need to take a look at uh, the chips, at uh, how uh, different memory architectures are implemented, and uh, hopefully we can um, extract from uh, these some uh, common characteristics that need to be simulated. So let's start with the chips. Uh, I've included here uh, some uh, sample chips. Uh, of course, there are many others. But uh, what you can see here is that we have uh, different uh, sizes of uh, the so-called words available inside these chips. So we have chips with uh, one-bit words. These were used in uh, older systems. We have chips with uh, eight-bit words and we have chips, uh, very recent ones, uh, that are organized in uh, banks uh, which have again 8-bit words but uh, there are also other architectures uh, one common thing to remember here is the internal uh, dimension of uh, a memory word inside a memory chip which can vary now looking at uh, real uh, computer implementation in this case uh, old spectrum computer uh, you can see that uh, the memory is actually comprised of uh, eight uh, individual chips uh, these are uh, one bit memory chips and uh, they are combined to form an eight bit uh, memory so the same address is uh, provided to all these chips each one provides one bit of data and uh, combined uh, this provide 8 bits of data so the memory itself even though it's comprised of 1 bit memory chips the memory uh, offers an 8 bit word if we take a look at uh, a more recent uh, computer uh, we can see here uh, memory modules, uh, also known as DIMMs, uh, that are comprised of multiple memory chips, but uh, these are connected uh, to the CPU, not directly, but through a chipset, which is uh, known as a Northbridge chipset. So, from the point of view of... Uh, program. Uh, the program is not directly communicating with uh, the memory modules, but uh, it communicates with this Northbridge chipset. 
if we look at uh, very recent architectures, uh, we notice that uh, the, north, the north bridge is no longer present and the memory related functionality is now inside a modern CPU, for example, an uh, Intel i7. Uh, so in this case, the CPU will communicate directly with uh, the memory, uh, the memory modules. Uh, but uh, for our uh, simulation, we probably don't need uh, to consider how exactly uh, the CPU is communicating with the memory. Uh, but uh, instead, we should uh, think more about uh, the characteristics of uh, the memory. So now let's look at uh, some memory modules. Uh, a memory module combines uh, multiple chips. Uh, it's connected directly to the CPU or uh, via the North Bridge. Uh, it has a number of uh, address lines, but in uh, all these architectures, uh, the addresses uh, are uh, actually referring to 8-bit uh, memory locations. And we have data lines which allow for 32-bit or 64-bit uh, data transfer. For older uh, computers it was also possible to have 16-bit uh, data transfers. However, if uh, we look uh, at uh, some very old uh, systems. Uh, we can see here, uh, for example, the Intel uh, 4004 uh, CPU and a system implemented with uh, this CPU uh, would uh, have 12-bit addresses, which uh, are actually uh, comprised of 4-bit uh, uh, individual addresses which are multiplexed forming 12-bit addresses uh, and uh, the memory would uh, actually provide 4-bit uh, data words. Uh, even though the CPU instructions were 8 bits or 16 bits but the data words was 4-bit. Uh, still at uh, old computers, uh, for example a PDP-8 computer, would have a 12-bit address uh, offering uh, access to 12-bit words. So each address would uh, provide access to an individual 12-bit word. PDP-11 uh, would have a 16-bit address uh, transferring 16-bit data uh, and this data is stored in memory as 16-bit words. So now if we summarize all this, uh, we see that a memory has a capacity. This is the total storage available, a number of address lines, a number of data lines, and also uh, an internal word size. Of course, the memory may have additional details such as latency, clock speed, multi-channel configurations, and so on. But uh, these are not really relevant uh, for a simple uh, system simulation. Of course, they may be relevant for a more detailed simulation, but not for a simple one. Now, if we look at these main characteristics and uh, look at uh, different uh, architectures, so we can uh, give some examples. Uh, this table does not provide maximum or typical or minimum or whatever. Uh, these are just examples of uh, values associated with uh, different uh, memory characteristics. So. Um, what uh, we can see here is that uh, capacity, of course, varies greatly with uh, newer architectures going in the gigabytes uh, and possibly terabytes range. Uh, the address size, uh, of course,
numbers increased, the data size increased, but both data and address are typically uh, either 8 uh, bytes, uh, 8 uh, bits, uh, 12 bits, 16 bits, 64 bits, or this very old 4 bits. Uh, the word size uh, in uh, modern computers is 8 bits, however. So uh, each address is actually referring to an 8-bit uh, location and then uh, from that location uh, you can read uh, for example 64 uh, bits uh, which actually means uh, you refer to a, uh, to a particular address and you don't read a single memory word but you read eight uh, memory words and so on. So, um, what are the requirements uh, for a simulation? Well, uh, we must implement uh, the memory properties uh, like capacity, word size, data size, address size. And uh, we must implement uh, several methods like a configure method. This would allow specifying the properties. An initialize method which uh, would allow us to initialize the memory uh, with uh, different policies, either uh, zero or uh, fixed value or uh, random values. Then, of course, we need to implement a read method and a write method. But uh, we are going to discuss uh, an example implementation in Java in our next video. See you then.